What's going on, everyone? This is Alex, USA Days. Uh, so some of you asked me, how did I start as a QA engineer? What is my first QA job? So my very first QA experience is was Utest. It's a platform where you can sign up and work as a tester yourself. So you will be given a task to pass as the very first beginner's task. Uh, if you succeed with the task finding bugs, then you're going to go through the training process. It will help you to actually understand the QA better, how to find bugs, what to do, how to do test cases, stuff like that. And then based on the devices that you will uh, provide into the system, it will start giving you different tasks. Uh, you will get paid by number of bugs found, uh, by test cases completed, and so on. So I tested multiple applications, even uh, one of the famous applications for voice calls. I'm not sure if I can still disclose it. I mean, it's been so far back, so maybe I can talk about what I tested, but it's one of the uh, voice uh, apps that you would use now for communication, still very popular one. Uh, different type of desktop app, video services, and so on. So whatever devices you provide, uh, they will start sending you tasks creating uh, test cases, test plans, or just finding bugs in products uh, based on the devices that you put into the system. So at the time I provided my desktop, uh, some handheld devices, my phone, and so on. So I would regularly do several tasks a day and the output can differ, but on average, if I mean, if you pick a good amount of tasks at that point, at that time, I think you could do a couple thousand dollars a month, right? I don't know about now. The rates could have been different. The amount of tasks you're going to get different. It really greatly depends on what you will do, what is your region, what kind of devices you provide, how much demand is there. So this is my first experience. Uh, from that experience, I moved into the full-time position as a QA engineer. And that is a little bit uh, different experience. So I think... With QA in general, you have to think what kind of path you're going to take in your career uh, because the industry you're going to pick will determine what uh, you will do in the future. It doesn't mean you can't switch from industry uh, to industry. And I've done it all my career. I've been switching different in industries. Uh, but sometimes the industry you choose, you might get uh, an expert knowledge in it, and then you will be struggling to switch to another industry. So for example, if you'll go into the banking and you will uh, learn like some financial regulations, uh, what are uh, like specifics for that, then it's gonna be hard to move to any other sort of testing because you're gonna be kind of an expert in banking and you're gonna get stuck in the industry. So that's a possibility. Uh, so I started my journey in a mix of a hardware and software. It's a semiconductor company that was bought out, uh, but it was making Wi-Fi chips. Some of the Wi-Fi chips that I've tested and worked on probably in your devices, if you live in the United States, even though they are now older devices, they have 11 AC uh, standard, but still a lot of them distributed. So we were not directly distributing to the consumers, but we were distributing to distributors. So uh, as a manufacturer providing chips to another manufacturer, then those will go in the retail. Uh, so you can think about uh, Comcast, Cox Cable, Verizon, AT&T, and so on. So the things when I started to work as a engineer, the things that I was doing when I was working full-time, so um, testing phones and tablets mostly, connecting them to the our modem, measuring the throughput speed, there are different protocols, TCP and UDP. Uh, one is protocol that makes sure that you don't lose any frames. Other is more for like video streaming, like UDP. Um, I'm not going to go into technical details, but so technically testing how devices connect, how is video quality on those devices to our uh, router or prototype was our chip uh, or our um, uh customers that had our chip in their products. So testing that uh, was different security configuration with security, without security, uh, different distances uh, in different locations, maximum, minimum dis distance, multiple devices connected versus uh, one device. If there was like rad radar on or off, uh, if there was noise in the air or off, what, you know, there's, there's so many different combinations. So like a great amount of data gathering uh, measuring throughput, was using special tools to do that. Um, 
sometimes it would be like natural traffic let's say you could run a video and stream a video sometimes it would be generated traffic with different tools uh, so from that uh, it kind of expanded and grew in multiple areas of uh, networking uh, some coding uh, some automation so a lot of different things were done but you know it kind of progress so in the position as you grew as i grew through uh through the ranks of qa and with the company because we started just with a few engineers and kind of build everything from scratch uh so testing our devices against different third-party devices uh, throughput and everything uh video quality uh how long it can stay connected what happens if you have like, multiple connections uh then was that uh, testing our devices and then competitor devices uh, and making sure that, you know, our throughput is at the levels it should be, that competitors are not much better than us, or even, like, we are better than competitors. Uh, we always had all the new gadgets. So anything comes out, we would have it for testing because it would have the latest Wi-Fi chips. And there are really not so many uh, Wi-Fi players on the market. I think, I'm not I'm not in the market, I'm not in that industry now for a while, so I, I can't share, say for sure, but it's... Uh, Qualcomm, uh, Realtek, uh, Broadcom, Intel, and um, and then that was us, Quantena, but again, that was bought out. So if, when you think about Wi-Fi, there's really not, not a lot of competitors. Uh, maybe I forgot some, some players, but uh, so you would get all those competitors, uh, their modems or routers, so-called access points, and then test against different devices that we work with uh so a lot of manual data gathering right running traffic uh gathering data now then once it evolved kind of other responsibilities came uh was that so then we started uh so first of all learning linux and networking uh part of wi-fi then um learning Wi-Fi standards, uh, and then there's a company, well, not company, organization called Wi-Fi Alliance that works on uh, guiding uh, how to improve Wi-Fi and how different companies that do Wi-Fi, like all those producers of routers and chips, they have to have interper interoperability. So that means if you have a device from one manufacturer, it still should work with the device from another manufacturer, even though, you know, uh, they're different companies, different manufacturers, it's still same Wi-Fi standard. So um, moving from just testing devices, gathering data, uh, recording like video streams and uh, understanding how the our device perform into more advanced uh areas where we would start actually building our own test beds so we would buy uh, equipment necessary so it's like you build your testing lab uh, where you have isolated uh, cabinets that don't other any signal don't get through you put devices in those cabinets you connect them with cables um, you configure the uh, computers that connected to those devices to run them so uh, we created like an image where everything sets up uh, at a, a disk on ubuntu linux was network configuration everything pre-uploaded and then that image we just started cloning was like a docking station where you clone uh, uh, hard drives and then ordering all the same pcs cloning from one device uh one for and putting those cloned uh drives and all of the pcs bringing multiple test beds connecting them with access points and so on so building test beds uh manual testing uh data and traffic and gathering results analyzing those results then automation came in place so uh writing automation and scheduling tests now after that um also, we had some solutions that would be like a web platform for customers to, so they can get the data on their Wi-Fi, how many times someone connects, disconnects. So testing the uh, graphical user interface for that uh, and overall uh, accessibility, uh, security of the application, stuff like that. So there was like web testing involved. Uh, and at some point, one of the biggest part of my uh, work became actually participating with Wi-Fi Alliance going to PlugFest, so the standards for development of uh, different Wi-Fi 
standard. So multiple companies get together, they bring their devices, there is a plan that is created how this Wi-Fi should work, and all the manufacturers create a product to abide by that plan. They get together and test that everything should work. And um, so participate in those plug fest and then certifying our devices. So taking the device, your chip, in a special lab for like multiple days where you go through the test plans created by Wi-Fi lines, going through all their tests on how your device should be configurable, uh, what kind of uh, details you know you should be sending in your frame. So we would use something called Wireshark and a, a device called Sniffer. So essentially, you turn your uh, you turn your Wi-Fi card into like a spy device that sniffs all all the frames in the radio signal. So because Wi-Fi is pretty much like a radio, and then you analyze those frames in Wireshark, looking how it associates, dissociates, how it connects, what kind of communication happening within, and so on. So uh, spending sometimes like weeks on uh, on the, in the labs, third-party labs authorized by Wi-Fi Alliance to give the certification uh, for the device. So if we have a device and we want to say, okay, it's Wi-Fi line certified, it it's, uh, supports certain standard, uh, so let's say 11AC uh, or 11N or other 11AX, uh, whatever there is now for uh, Wi-Fi. So you go to the lab, you bring your device, and then you will test in the lab with other devices in that lab that abide by the standard, that all the communication is correct, passing all the tests, minimal throughput, thresholds, uh, and so on. So yeah, um, so that was the main part of what I was doing as a tester. So a lot of different things kind of changed and grew uh, throughout the career. And I think it kind of picked before I switched out jobs into that role of, uh, I don't know if it's it was like pure testing now, but more of kind of uh, making sure that our device gets certified uh, and going through third-party li uh, labs and bring our devices and doing certification. So yeah, that was my uh, first QA experience. I mean, there was a little problem to get into another industry because that is very, not very niche, but it is pretty niche. So uh, you do have uh, wireless on multiple devices, and then you do have like mobile and LTE and like IoT and mesh networks and all of that stuff. Uh, you, you can go in multiple different directions, but Wi-Fi in itself is also a niche. So when I switched to the next industry, which would be like e-commerce and then uh, online uh, web-based gaming, I mean, that was a pretty big switch. So a lot of things you kind of figure out and uh, uh, learn them again. So that's and uh, that's also part of the QA. So uh, QA as a QA engineer, if you get in one industry, you can stay there for years. That's true. But if you want to switch and and I and I wanted to do something else, I wanted to do diff different, not a Wi-Fi. So that's why I went into more of a gaming and e-commerce. Um, but you might, you know, you might have to like learn many things from scratch the testing principles the approach the understanding how to test products that kind of stays as basic thing but the tools uh what you will be testing what to focus on all of those things they definitely change with the industry so uh hopefully uh that was interesting you learned something new and that answers your question what was my first uh qa job this was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.